Uh, having seven defenders uh, play eight gaps in this over front defense that we, we named the 4-3 and over front defense for us with a two deep shell behind it. We're going to take a look at the gap responsibilities and how we try to defend those eight gaps with seven players. The first action we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at what we call a flow action where both backs are attacking to the tight end side. In this particular defense now, our defensive end who's lined up in that head up six technique is responsible for the C gap. Our tackle in the three technique is responsible for the B gap and our nose who's tilted is responsible for the A gap and our end on the weak side is responsible for the C gap. So we show the linebackers immediately what gaps are going to be taken care of and now they are going to respond based on the flow of the backs, the angle of the backs, and also the, any pulls of the linemen how we're going to fit the remaining gaps that are available. We have three linebackers to play four gaps and this is where you really have to drill your players and understand where their responsibilities are going to be. In this first particular play we're going to take a look at is what we consider a flow play again both backs to the tight end side and it's going to be a power play where the angle of the fullback is going to be outside and we're going to have a backside pull player. So as we go through each linebacker we'll talk about their fit and where we expect them to play. Initially on this play here the will backer is keying the track of the back and as he sees the fullback take a hard angle to the outside he'll step with his left foot and then he's going to come in an outside attitude what we call a box technique position where he's going to take that fullback on with his inside arm keeping his outside arm free. He is responsible then for the D gap. Our mic backer generally responsible as pre-snap rule would be the A gap to his side will also read the track of the back and because of the fact that there is no attack in that area he will now work inside out to the football and he will now track the full back and in this particular play that we're going to look at a power play there's going to be a backside puller where the offense again is trying to create a different gap in this case here our Mike Backer is going to come across the face of that puller again in a box technique ripping across the face and turning the ball back. He then would be responsible for the outside position on that on that pulling guard. Finally our Sam Backer who in base defense is a cutback player in that B gap. The B gap is now eliminated in this particular play because of the pull. The nose man now it becomes responsible for any cutback play because the offense has created a different gap responsibility. And our Sam Backer from the back side now is uh, not only key in the flow of the backs, but he's also key in his confirmation keys and lineman pulling. And now he's going to work over the top to the strong A gap to handle any ball that would cut downhill. And so this is how we would fit seven guys playing eight gaps in a flow run where a power play was... Uh, being with the guard pulling right there. The next fit we're going to take a look at in the 4-3 defense, again seven men involved in the fit, is going to be a flood play, both backs away from the tight end. In this particular play here, a lead weak, our defensive end on the, on the side will play into that C gap. Our nose again will have the same responsibility, the A gap, and we ask him to demand the double team and hold that gap as long as possible. Our tackle on the back side again is in the B gap and our end is in the C gap. So again you can see that we have the four gaps defined by our defensive linemen and we believe the simplicity again of those guys being aggressive and attacking really helps our defense. Now as the linebackers read the flow, our Sam Backer will read the track of the fullback and as the fullback comes at him in an ISO situation or lead weak situation, he's going to step up and he's going to take on that fullback's in what we call a box technique. Again, he's going to turn that ball back inside, take it on with his inside arm, keep his outside arm free. Our Mike Backer, reading the flow of the backs, it's a tight action away from the tight end. He becomes what we call a fast B player. He's going to be up and in to that B gap right away. The quicker you can get your Mike Backer into that gap, the quicker you'll demand that offensive lineman to come off the double team. And that's the critical part. The faster we can get downhill and, and force that guard to come off the double team, that allows our nose man to get penetration and be strong in that A gap. If they maintain the block on the double team, 
Some teams will stay on that double team a little bit longer. The Mike Backer then should be in position to make a play. It's critical that the Mike Backer, as he comes in that fast B, gets across the face of that guard that might chip up on him. Again, that's why we call it a box technique, because he'll come across his face with the outside arm free. Finally, you take a look at the other gap that's responsible uh, for the will backer, and that's the backside A gap. When, f when action's away from him in this flood action, he's responsible for that backside A cutback gap. He'll be the linebacker now that will handle any cutbacks that come tight down the field. And obviously, a lot of times on these types of plays, if you have two hard-filling linebackers at point of attack, the ball will cut back. And this is a critical uh, area that the will backer must defend. The one gap you're going to end up giving up then is that all the way back to the D gap. You're going to force the offense to make sure that they have to wheel that thing all the way back to the D gap. And by that time, you're hoping to get some support from your corner at that time. So this is how we would handle a seven-man front flood play to the weak side. The third type of play we're going to look at in the seven-man front is what we call a split flow play. Uh, we're going to get the split action where a belly type of look is given on this particular play. Again, as we look at our base alignments, nothing changes for the defensive line. Quickly reviewing the end on the tight end is in the C gap, the tackle on the three techniques responsible for B gap, the nose, the A gap, and the end again, the C gap. On this particular play that we're going to take a look at, we could face some different blocking schemes on that weak side because a split belly play really has to be studied. Is it designed to be a cutback play? And that's what we'll talk about in this particular play. Sometimes it's designed where the back who gets the football has the ability to stay onside or backside. Generally, when the blocking scheme is a veer blocking scheme where the tackle who's on our five technique end tries to come down and inside to get the Sam backer, this is generally when the ball is designed to cut back. Our end in that particular case would squeeze and he would come under the fullback in the picture in a spill technique. This is critical to know because as the Sam backer reads this split flow, his initial gap control is the B gap. But as he sees the veer blocking action in front of him and feels the defensive end in front of him, we call that color in the hole, the Sam backer will work one gap wider and he becomes the D gap player in this particular play. He will play it with a box technique. He will turn that ball back to the middle backer. This particular defense demands both the mic and the will to work in conjunction with each other. They're both going to be king, the tandem of the backs, but the tailback and his, his route, his track, is really the key for us to be aware of. Both backers, when they get this particular action, will step with their left foots and they, they will read the track of the tailback. As the mic backer starts to read that track and feels the guy bending back to the cutback following his fullback, He's going to rock her back and he's going to go fast to the B just like he would in a flood play and he becomes our B gap player. The will backer meanwhile again stepping with his left foot is working first to the D gap reading the angle of that tail back. When he sees a tighter flow and a cutback action he's going to rock her back and he becomes the A gap player. Essentially what happens then is the fits on this particular play, the split belly play become like a flood fit. We have the Mike backer working with the Sam backer on the weak side of the defense, and we have the Will backer working to the inside. 